Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to create another card using the Gina K Designs Hands of Love stamp set that was inspired by the recent Crafters Unite Against Racism hop here on YouTube. I hope you'll stick around and see what I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and maybe even tap on that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Over the weekend, I had the pleasure of watching so many creators here on YouTube create projects for the Paper Crafters Unite Against Racism video hop. I was so inspired that I thought I would come and share my own card today. I know I've shared a little bit about it here on my community tab, but I have been taking time privately to learn and listen to people of color to know how I can do better as a white ally. Now I know some of you are going to say this is not the place for that and I come here for crafting, but honestly, where is the place for it? For years, I was always like, well, I'm not racist. I love everybody. But I don't think saying that is enough anymore. I want to act on that and put my words into actions. So for today, I want to make a kindness theme card that portrays skin types of all different colors. The inspiration for this card, not only was it the blog hop, but up here on the screen is a t-shirt that I saw a couple weeks ago and just fell in love with. When I saw that one of Gina K Design's newest stamp set included hands, I knew that I wanted to try to recreate it some way on a card. So I got out all of my shades of brown ink pads and I did a little stamping here for my colors. I ended up choosing five that I'll be using on my card today. Those are Ranger Sepia, Memento Desert Sand, Stampin' Up Early Espresso, this Studio G spot that I have no idea the name of the color, and Memento Rich Cocoa. I will be pairing that, like I mentioned, with the Gina K Design stamp set and this Kindness Matters die from Simon Says Stamp. Because I don't want to cut the stamp apart, but I want to stamp the hands individually, I will be doing a little masking on today's cards. And I just got out some cheap post-it notes from the Dollar Tree to help me with that. Also, I have a piece of white cardstock that is four and a quarter by five and a half, and then one of the white card bases from my stash. Let's get crafty. I did do some pre-planning for today's card layout. I did this on a recent sheet I designed after I was inspired by Christina Werner's card sketch video. I will link that below if you wanna find out more about kind of pre-planning your layouts. I did pull out my Misty for this card because I did want to keep the placement of my hands consistent between the top and the bottom. I brought in a piece of clear cardstock so I could arrange my stamp on the cardstock where I wanted it, and if I had accidentally left any ink on that stamp, it would not get it on my card base. You'll see there that I measured to find the center of the card, but once I had that laid down, I knew I had done something wrong, so I re-measured and centered that first hand that I was going to stamp. Once I had that all figured out, I grabbed the stamp with the door of my Misty and I inked the one hand up in Stampin' Up's Rich Espresso. Now I do cover up the hand that I don't want inked with that post-it note. And before I stamp it, you'll see I go ahead and pull that off. Otherwise, I would have a big brown blob on my card front. Once I had that first hand stamped, all I had to do for the other side was rotate my piece of cardstock 180 degrees. Now because this hand did come off the bottom a little bit, you'll see there that I wiped up some excess ink. I did not want to accidentally put my hand in that and then get it on the card. Off camera, I did decide on which inks I wanted to use and what order I wanted those to go in. I wanted my skin tones to be distributed across the card in just an array of different colors. Once I had that first hand down on both sides, I cleaned up my Misty and cleaned my stamp off. 
For the next hand, I chose the opposite of the one I just used, and because I want some movement across the card, I did raise this one higher on the card base. But the rest of the process is the same. Now this ink pad is pretty dry, so I had to ink it up and stamp it a few times, but eventually it worked, so I finished those two stamps and moved on, continuing the same process until I had the card completely filled. While you finish watching me do the stamping of the hands, I thought I would share with you some resources that I have been looking into lately about racial injustice and just trying to learn more on my own. Now, if you're not into this and you don't wanna hear it, feel free to just mute the video and you can catch up when I finish the stamping. In an effort to educate myself recently about racial injustice and trying to find out what I can do, I have been reading books, watching documentaries and movies, following new Instagram feeds, and then of course watching uncomfortable conversations with a black man here on YouTube. I'll tell you a little bit more about what the specifics look like for me, and I will link any resources I have in the description box below. First of all, four books. I have ordered How to Be an Anti-Racist and Stamped from the Beginning. Both of those are by Ibram X. Kendi, and my version of Stamp from the Beginning is actually the young adult version. I thought once I was done reading it, my daughter, who's going into high school, could read it as well. Speaking of Ibram X. Kendi, I did also listen to Brene Brown's podcast where he was a special guest. It was super informative, educational, and definitely worth a listen. Another book I'm currently reading is The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. This was turned into a movie, and again, I'm hoping once I read it that my daughter and I can watch that movie together and discuss. Among other black Instagrammers that I have started to follow to learn more, my top pick would have to be Nicole Walters. She put out an IGTV video. It's 23 minutes long, and it is so powerful and raw and real. If you only do one thing today that I suggest, please listen to her and watch this IGTV video. And finally for my recommendations, I haven't gotten to them yet, but they are on my to watch list. And that is two documentaries on Netflix. The first one is When They See Us and the second one is 13. If you are still listening, I just want to say thank you. I know that this got a little heavy for one of my crafty videos, but I want everyone to know where I stand. And I know that some of you may not want to subscribe to me anymore, but I hope that me spending time on one video out of 450 talking about something that I care about isn't gonna make you think that much differently of me when you've come to enjoy me, my content, and my videos. Once I had all of my hands stamped, I got out the Kindness Matters die and a scrap of white cardstock and cut that out. Originally, I had considered just putting this in the middle of the card just popped up on foam, but after kind of playing with that a little bit on the card, I realized that it would not make that die stick out enough. So I got out a couple scraps of cardstock. The first one I pulled out was craft, and I did like the way that looked, but before I made a final decision, I got out a scrap of red cardstock as well. And that just cemented the fact that I wanted to use the craft. I got out my trusty bottle of art glitter glue. If you don't have any of this, I highly recommend it. That fine tip point is worth every cent. I added adhesive to the back of the die cut and I set that aside to dry. Next, I got out the stamped piece and my card base, added adhesive to the back, and got that placed on the front. This was when I noticed that I had a couple little ink spots on my card front, so I got out my mono sand eraser and took care of those. Once the glue was all dry on my die cut, I got out my non-stick fine tip scissors and I cut out around the Kindness Matters die so there was just a small craft border. 
Once that was cut out, I got out a scrap of white craft foam and I added adhesive to a small piece of this. I can't remember what subscriber suggested this, but I do have to say I loved using the craft foam. It worked like a charm. And here are some close-up looks at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed getting to see how I made today's card. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.